All right, today we are going to talk about five types of flies that you need in your box for still water fishing. The top category might surprise you. Dude, that's a big brown All right, today, kind of a continuation of one of our previous videos where we talked about how to get into still water fishing. Link for that will be below. But today I'm going to talk to you about the five types of flies that you need in your box when you fish any still water. Now I'm gonna go in order for, for me personally, from number five up to number one, with number one being maybe not the most effective, but it might be one that's interesting to you. Wait till the end till you see that. But coming in at number five is probably the most popular category and that would be leeches or buggers. And we're just gonna kind of keep this to leeches, but you need to have leeches in your box because fish in still water are, there's leeches available in most still waters and it represents a high uh, protein, high uh, caloric value for the fish. And so leeches are, are gonna be a staple. So I'll usually run a very mixed batch of still water leeches. So uh, blacks and reds are gonna be important. There's gonna be, I like thin mint colors, silvers and grays. Um, but specific flies in this would be the bruised balance leech. And we'll show you pictures of these as we go. And although we don't sell it, Lance's half wit leech is another one that's really good. And we'll list the tutorials for those as well. Anything that we talk about, the links will be below in the description. So you need to have a good selection of leeches. Those are two that I would always have in my box. The uh, four coming in at number four would be uh, attractor patterns. And by attractors, I mean things that may not represent anything in particular. And specifically for me, I like boobies, fabs, and blobs, as well as these humongous boobies. And the reason I have foam on these flies is going to be related to a specific technique that we use. So when I say attractors, I like them because we're gonna fish them with either a really fast sinking line and you have your booby on the point out of three flies and that will help elevate and get the fly up off the bottom. It's a deadly technique. We've got some other videos that talk about using parabolic or sweep lines with these types, these types of flies. But I think regardless of your situation, having these foam infused still water flies that sink but can also have some uh, some buoyancy are going to be killer for you. So you want to have these in the box and the uh, styles, there's a lot of styles, but the two specific flies would be the uh, humongous booby. And then the woofda is a sty different, slightly different color, but those are two great ones to get started with. Um, now coming in at number three, we have damsels. Again, with still water, damsels are all over the place. And I think no matter what the time of year is, you wanna have a collection of damsels. So in my setup here, I've got four different pages of damsel flies. The two that we, or that I personally like to fish the most would be my belly flop balance damsel. But we also have one from Fulling Mill called the hothead damsel. It's a chartreuse hothead bead. So it's a little bit more of an attractor pattern. Again, damsels, the fish are all over damsels, so you need to have some good damsels in your box. Um, these are meant to be fished either down a little bit deeper, but typically uh, above weed beds, so you can use an indicator or just like a midge tip or a slow intermediate type of line to fish those on. Coming in at number two, we have coronamids. Now, coronamids, I think, are probably the most important overall category to cover. So you're going to find chronomids hatching all different times of the year. They're going to be different types of chronomids in different phases of their hatch. So it's very important that you nail down and dial in the types of chronomids that you want to fish with. So two that I've chosen are the oil slick buzzer. The oil slick is one of my patterns that comes through fulling mill. This is one that I find later in the hatch when the bugs are moving and pupating more towards the surface is super effective because of the coloration. It, it has that sheen to it. So the fish were in that maybe top three, four feet of water. They're going to be cruising looking for that telltale sign of the, of the gaseous uh, coronamids hatching or pupating. So that's my top one. 
but you also can't beat Lance Egan's Coronamid Frenchie. Another great must-have Coronamid pattern. The one thing I will say with Coronamids though, is you need to cover the weights. So with a given Coronamid pattern, I will typically have a weighted and an unweighted version. Because there's a lot, gonna be a lot of times where the fish are feeding in the top six inches of water, let's say, and anything with a bead just gonna go down too far. So always have damsels in your box. Now, coming in at number one, and this for me, is not that it's the most effective, but it's the most fun. And I think it's a category that people forget about or don't consider when they're still water fishing. And that is dry flies. So for me with dry flies, I will typically have a whole bunch of bionic ants. And again, the tutorial, and you can buy them in the link down below, but bionic ants are, are killer because they represent a lot of things that could potentially fall into the water on a lake or a reservoir or pond ants, beetles, hoppers, you name it. So I fish them in black, I fish them in purple, and I fish them in brown. We have all those colors available. And then one of the other patterns that I really, really like for Stillwater, which probably wasn't originally intended for what Cheech designed it for, and that is the Grumpy Frumpy. I think it's an all around great attractor pattern, awesome for streams, but I found it to be incredible for Stillwater. Um, I like a lot of the different colors. Purple and tan is probably my favorite but the Royal one is another good one. So there are lots of variations of the Grumpy Frumpy, but again, it's a great attractor for still water. The reason I put it at number one is if I have to choose and I'm on a lake, if I'm gonna have a fish that eats a dry fly, I'd probably prefer to catch a, a maybe fewer fish with a dry fly, but just the fact that you can catch bigger fish on dry flies, that to me sets the, the standard. So out of these types of categories, these are ones that I would just say recommended to you. Make sure you have some patterns that cover these bases. There's gonna be more and we'll have other videos that follow up to this to kind of dial that in. But get these patterns, tie these patterns. All the links are down in the description below.